You might be wondering, is this the right course for me? Well, let me ask you, do you want a website that stands out from the ordinary? One that looks like it was carefully crafted by a master web developer, but requires no experience or coding? If you answered yes, then this course is definitely designed for you. In this course, I will be carefully deconstructing my own proven website step by step and show you how I created a Google page one ranked website. We will start with the basics of choosing the right domain name and hosting and then slowly walking you through the entire build process. To make sure you don't get overwhelmed or bored, I've broken each new concept down into individual lectures. As an added bonus, I will be sharing all of my SEO tips and tricks. Nothing will be held secret. You will get an exclusive, behind the scenes look at everything I've done. Now a word of caution. Building a beautiful website takes time. I've spent years learning how to build websites and creating digital content, and I love it, but I didn't learn it overnight. There's absolutely nothing you can do to get around that, but I promise that if you stick with me until the end, you will finish with the most incredible website. One of the most important things that you can do before you even start your website is to actually come up with a great domain name. Now a domain name is simply the name that your website is called. Google.com, eBay.com, etc. So you want to put a lot of thought into it because this is what you're going to forever be known for and it's something that you can't change once it's established. So if you're creating a brand, putting a lot of money behind that, you want to come up with something that is really going to resonate with people. So I wrote an article on simple content creation called five rules for choosing a stunning domain name and I really suggest that you go over and take a look at it. It's a very short article but I have five suggestions to come up with for your domain name and I think that it'll be really helpful for you because again your domain name, it's your name. It's what people are going to know you for. So uh, take a look at those suggestions before you get started on your website. Don't even worry about putting together a website. Put a lot of thought into your domain name, and once you do that, everything else will come together. When you're done looking at that article and you've come up with a perfect domain name, the next thing that you need to do is to set up hosting. So if you go to this link over here on the right-hand side, Recommended Host, Click on that and that will take you directly to Bluehost and I will explain to you how to set that up in our next video. Now that you've chosen the perfect domain name, it's time to get started with hosting. Now there are a lot of different hosting companies out there. I recommend Bluehost. Uh, I use them personally myself. I think that they have great customer service and I've never had any downtime which for a website is really, really important. So if you're on my website, Simple Content Creation, you can go to this box down here on the right-hand corner, Recommended Host, or simply type in bluehost.com into your browser. Get started now, and on the next page you will be faced with a few different options for hosting. Starter Plus, Business Pro, it's really going to depend on your needs. I personally have the Plus plan because I have multiple websites. Uh, if you only have one website and you have no intentions of getting any more, which you can always upgrade, but you can go ahead and start with the starter plan, which is $3.95 per month. So I'll click on the starter plan. Now here is the moment of truth. You're going to type in your domain name to see if it's actually available to make sure nobody else has taken that name. I'm going to put in simple content creation and you know, my recommendation in that last article is to always have a .com name. I'm going to go ahead and just put .net because I already have the .com. Click next. And if everything goes well, great. We have a sign up. Congratulations. So that name is available. From here, it's pretty basic and straightforward. I don't think I need to talk you through it. Uh, just put in your information. Uh, package information here in the middle of the screen. Uh, the setup fee is always free, which is great. Now, that $3.95 per month price is based on signing up for 36 months. I would recommend you, if you're going to have your website for any amount of time, I would go ahead and just sign up for that. Again, you can cancel at any time, so the longer you sign up, the cheaper the price. The rest of these options that you have, domain privacy protection, uh, that's basically if you want, if somebody looks up your domain, they won't come across your personal information, like your name, who owns it. 
that's go I'm going to leave that completely up to you. The rest of these options, uh, I'm going to uncheck the Site Backup Pro, the Site Lock. We don't. I don't think you need any of those. Uh, put in your billing information and just read the terms and conditions and then hit submit. After you've been given a username and password, go ahead and log into Bluehost. When you get there, you'll come to this dashboard right here. I want you to click on cPanel because now we're going to install WordPress and it's very, very simple. Okay, when we're in cPanel, go to Website Builders, Install WordPress. Click on that. On this next page, click Install. Now on this page, select which domain you would like to install to. This will be the name that you just came up with. So whatever that might be, go ahead and highlight that in the box. Now for purposes of this tutorial, I already have it all set up. So I'm going to click on this other domain and then click check domain. This should just take a moment. Great, now if everything has gone the way it's supposed to, Last step, you're almost there. You can show advanced options right here. Uh, type in your website, whatever you want to call it. You can come up with your own admin username. I'm going to leave that and your admin password. So once you've done that, go ahead and click the box I've agreed and then install now. When you've clicked the install now button, you will be redirected to the WordPress login page. Put in your username your password and now click login and now it's official you are on WordPress you are logged into the dashboard and from the dashboard I will show you everything that you need to know to get started with your website uh, but from here we're all set and ready to go I am so excited because we finally get to work on our web page to access the web page and get to the WordPress dashboard Type in your web address, the one that you created before with Bluehost. Mine is www.uppercervicalgreenville.com. And then here's the key. Put in backslash wp-login. And that is the web address you will always punch in to access your dashboard. So once you've done that, you'll get led to this page. Put in your username that you created before and log in. The WordPress dashboard for some, it might seem a little overwhelming because there's a lot of different options. You're really not sure where to start. And that's going to be my job today is to uh, take you on a tour of all the different options, uh, particularly all the ones over here in the left-hand column. Now, I have to tell you that a lot of the options in the column that I have right now, uh, these are a lot of plugins and different things that I have pre-installed. And so you will not see them right away. Okay, And that's fine because we're going to have those uh, come up later. But for right now, you won't have them. So don't worry. I'm going to take you through the most basic different options over here on the left-hand column. And hopefully by the time we're done, you're going to have a really great understanding of where you need to go and how certain things work with WordPress. Because once you get familiar with it, it's very, very simple. Okay, so don't stress yet. So to get started, posts. Let me explain that. Posts are basically, if you have a blog, posts are going to be each and every blog entry that you do. So I'll click here on all posts so you can get a, a feel for what I've done in the past. Uh, each one of these uh, entries right here are different posts that I've done in the past. It's great. You can see the author, different categories that I have for them, different tags, uh, the SEO, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So that's post. Media, we'll move on to that. Media is going to include anything that you upload to your server. So that's going to be pictures, videos, anything like that will be loaded into your media library. Okay, So you can see here a lot of different documents, pictures, uh, different things that I have uploaded. So anything that you need to access will be right there. Now pages, pages are any of the actual pages of your website. For mine, for example, I have a blog page, I have my home page, a contact page, a library page, uh, also a meet the doctor kind of an about you page right there. Uh, that's where you'll access this. And uh, let's see, so we have comments, 
anytime that somebody leaves a comment on your web page you'll be able to see those and approve them uh, portfolio if you for instance have a photography business and you want to have like a gallery of sorts the portfolio will be what you will be using and I can show you how to set one of those up uh, here in a little bit uh, I have a lot of different health related articles uh, set up as a portfolio and so you can see each one of those uh, next uh, FAQ answer a lot of different questions if you have them feedback let's see contact will not be there initially uh, appearance will be there and now appearance uh, this is a really important one because this as the name implies will show you exactly what your web page is going to look like so a lot of different options here I'll run through it really quick themes for instance and we're gonna come back to this one in a moment WordPress by default has a few a number of different themes that they have and a theme is basically just what your website looks like it's a pre-installed type well theme that you can choose uh, and it have it has a different buy for so depending on what you're going for uh, these themes are are very customizable you can make them look the way that you want to and that's the beauty of them so it takes out all the coding all the hard work it makes it really simple for you by default you'll have all of these from WordPress uh, 2011 2015 2012 each year they come up with a new theme for that uh, the one that I use and is Avada and it's the most incredible theme out there uh, in our in another lecture we'll cover everything that Avada does for you and that is what we'll be using uh, to create our website okay so that's themes the rest of things in appearance will be anywhere from the widgets the menus the headers background theme options theme options for instance Avada they have a lot of different of their own options and so I'll click on that really quick and this is where you'll be able to change everything in your website uh, how it looks uploading your logo the header diff a lot of different styles of headers which you'll see right here Avada comes with it looks like five different headers so we'll cover this don't worry I'm just showing you everything that the dashboard has to offer now plugins plugins are basically like apps apps that you put on your phone they make it more useful they you know provide a lot of different functionality so there are a ton of different plugins that's another thing I will show you is are all the plugins that I have installed uh, that make my website go faster more productive a lot easier for people to use the next thing you'll see are users so that's gonna be all your user information such as your login you can see mine here as the administrator you can just change the what your the color scheme of the whole dashboard it's not really important uh, a lot of different options right there tools don't use that a whole lot don't worry about that and then different settings those right there I'm gonna go ahead and click back on the dashboard right here uh, those are all the different buttons that come by default with your WordPress when you get started we'll go through each one of those do not worry but that is a basic overview if you have ever want to go back to your your site to see what it looks like just click up here upper cervical chiropractic that's the my business and then visit site I'll show you that really quick and this right here is the website that we will be creating or something very similar to that this is a site that's got me on page one of Google uh, I will be honest with you I get a lot of people that absolutely fall in love with this site they ask me who did it how much did I pay I get those questions all the time I have patients that come into my office that they simply come to my office based on the website saying how much better it looks than all of the competitors that I have in my area I'm pretty happy with it I'm always adjusting it making it look a little bit better I will I'm gonna run through everything that I did in order to create this website and by the time that we're done uh, hopefully you'll have something similar and you'll be able to get, to get great results as well in this lecture we're going to get started with our home page and I'm going to show you all the options that we have available so from your dashboard go up here to the top and visit site now right here this is the website that I created by myself it's a Google page one ranked website for my area 
and uh, it took a lot of time to get it the way that I, I wanted it, and that's because I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I've changed a lot of different things. Full disclaimer here, I've actually since sold my practice in Greenville. I actually sold this uh, website as well, and so if you go visit it, it could change in the future, so some of the things that I show you might be a little bit different uh, if you go to the web address. However, uh, I'm going to actually take you through, I'm going to break down the website. That's how this is going to work. I'm going to show you what I have, the finished product, and then I'm going to work backwards. So I'll show you exactly how everything's done, and hopefully that'll be more visual for you so you have a better idea of what it looks like and where we're going. Because uh, I know sometimes it's hard to conceptualize a finished product if you don't see it. Just to show you a few things that we're going to do for our homepage. I'll show you every single different option. You can change the here on the header. You can change all these different colors. Put up your contact information if you like. Have social icons, your menus right here. You can have drop down menus, whatever you like. This you can have put in your logo. This is a called a fusion slider. It has the option of having a background, a movie background like that, which I think is really pretty fantastic. My website is a 100% full width uh, website, meaning it extends from one side of the screen to the other. Some you will see that are more box-like. I'll click over to my simple content creation. This is what's called boxed. If you see here, we actually just have a background on both sides as opposed to it being a full width like that. I, I personally, I really like the full width. Scrolling down, different buttons. I'll show you how to install those. All these different icons in uh, in their in these columns here. Also, this is a really neat little feature that you can do. If you see that when the when you highlight the text right there, click over it, it has a little pop up there. It's a it's a neat little thing. Also, my favorite is the parallax effect. If you see the picture, as you scroll up, you can see more of the picture. That's an awesome effect. I love that. Here we have these accordion drop down menus. I'll show you how to put in videos. These are testimonials. Also we have these bolded points right here, a contact form for people if they want to request an appointment or you know contact you. Also here again we have the parallax effect of this background and some more social proof. Um, these are some testimonials that people did for me. Also these counter boxes, I think that's a pretty neat effect. Here in the footer, we put in different widgets. I'll show you how to do all of this. And then here at the very bottom, also more social icons, your copyright information. Final thing, over here, this is a plugin called Sumo Me. It's uh, so people can share your, your content. It's really great. It's also a way of getting people to sign up. So if you have uh, something that you want to sell or you want to do a newsletter, something like that. You can do different pop-ups for people to sign up for your newsletter. So that's a basic overview of what we'll be doing. Um, one final thing. Uh, this right here, you will not, people will not see this if they come to your website. You will only see this menu if you are logged in. So if you go over here to the right hand corner and log out, this will disappear and you will not see any of this information. But this is a quick shortcut so that if at any time you want to change your page or go to any other menu, you can up here. In this lecture, I'm gonna tell you all about themes, where to find them, and the easiest way to get them installed. So to start with themes, go to Appearance, click Themes, and I showed you these themes the, in our last lecture. WordPress comes with a few themes that come with it by default. They're free, they don't cost you anything. They are customizable to a point, and I think they're okay. I, If you uh, have some creativity and put some work into it, I think that you can make them look uh, pretty good. However, uh, I think if you're gonna have a really legit, awesome website that just looks incredible, I think that's an investment that you should definitely make. For the purposes of this class, I'm actually going to show you how to use the Avada theme it is an incredible theme and it looks fantastic. So to get a theme, my go-to place, if you go to, uh, if you're on my website still, simplecontentcreation.com and go to my top 10 list. This is a top 10 list of my favorite apps and different 
things that tools that I use. If you go to the third one, the Envato, click there or just go to themeforce.net or you can go to market.envato.com. This is the most incredible resource that you will ever find if you're doing anything with a website or any kind of uh, creative marketing content. Uh, they ha It's split up into several different categories. Theme Forest, Code Canyon, Video Hive, you can see the rest here. If you need anything, if you need a new theme, you can find it here. If you need for instance, a video, uh, like a stock photo uh, video of something, go here, images, sounds, music, you name it, it's all right here. And most of them, yes, they do cost money. However, if you were to actually hire somebody to do a lot of this stuff, it's going to cost you so much more. And so this is really my secret, not so much secret, but place that I go to get everything that I need for my website or any kind of content creation. Go back to Theme Forest, click here. I'm gonna type in Avada. This is the theme that we'll use. It's $58 for the Avada theme. And again, it's gonna be your website. This is what it's gonna represent you. So don't be cheap on this. Uh, $58 is a really small investment considering that a website like the one that we're going to create could easily, somebody would easily charge you about $15,000 to create that. And in fact, I've seen a lot of websites that have been charged that much money. And honestly, I didn't think that they were so great. So for $58, that is a bargain. Don't even think twice about the price. Avada, if you look right here, they have over 10,000 five-star ratings. Uh, so people are very, very happy with it. You can see here the sales are almost 140000 Purchase this without thinking. Um, it is a no-brainer. Let's click here on Avada. I want to show you, you can any of these themes you can actually click on. You can have a live preview so you can see what they actually look like and get some inspiration. And I really recommend you doing this. And bookmark this page here because uh, I guarantee you'll you'll really want to come back and look at this stuff. So I'm gonna click on the live preview really quick to show you what Avada would look like and all the different options. This is just a demo that they have. And I'll scroll down here. One of the new things that they came out with on Avada is they have Avada Classic, which is what you're looking at now, but they also came out with these other, uh, these other themes that you can actually install and they're really pretty incredible you know look at those you can look at all the options uh, there's the demos up here look at the short codes all the different things that you can do uh, we'll click here right here flip boxes for instance flip boxes really cool you have this box with the little icon here with some text flip it over it gives you some more um, information click on uh, something else here uh, we'll just for instance, Google Maps. Think, oh, big deal, Google Maps, that's nothing special. However, the integration that they have with it is incredibly cool, uh, where you can do all sorts of different options, where you can put your face on there, uh, different look to the map. Look at all these different styles. I mean, that is very, very cool in my opinion. So go through the short codes and all the features. There are just limitless number of things that you can do here. Also, one of the really cool things about Avada is the fact that all of these samples that you see here, when I click here on home, all of these things you can actually download. Avada has one of the most credible websites, uh, support websites, where you can go to and there's a whole host of people answering questions, showing you how to do this stuff. You know, if you have any sort of problems installing it, or any hiccups, I mean, go there and there are people willing to show you exactly how to troubleshoot any problem that you might have. But when you go to install, you can actually go to any of these different versions. So for instance, uh, this is a home version right here. And just look right there, you can look at this style. If you want this, you can actually just download it, use the, the template just as it is. You have to fill in your own pictures and text, obviously but it gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do. One of my favorites is the parallax. 
effect. Uh, so one page parallax, and this is one of the more popular things that you'll see nowadays on websites. And I think it looks fantastic. Look right here, it has this uh, playing video with this fusion slider right here. I have that for my website. I think it's really nice. Um, so you can scroll down. And as you scroll, you see how everything magically just pops up. Uh, you have counters. Anything that you see on this page is what you can create with Avada. That is really why I chose this particular theme. Not just because um, you know everybody else loves it, but because I genuinely love this theme. And they constantly come up with new updates. It doesn't cost you a dime. I would um, definitely... Not I wouldn't think twice about getting this theme. There's a quick little preview of Avada. Let's go back to the Envato Marketplace. So once you've decided to uh, buy this, just go ahead and you'll have to sign up. Okay, it's pretty standard fare. Add it to your cart, go ahead and download it. After you've purchased and downloaded the theme, wherever you saved it to, that's what you're gonna do next. Is we're going, I'm going to show you how to actually install that theme Let's go back to your dashboard really quick to add any new theme. Now, I already have it installed. Okay, you can see that right here. Just assume that that is not there. Go to Add New Theme, or you can go up here, Add New. Click on that. And then up here, Upload Theme. And then you're going to choose a file. Now the file that you downloaded from Avada was a fairly large one, probably 240, 250 megabytes. And it's a zip file. If you look here, it is asking for a zip format. That 250 megabyte download is not the zip file that you want. So let me show you really quick. We'll go to my, I saved it to my desktop. And I already unzipped it, which you want to do. You want to unzip it first. Click on the folder, click on Avada theme, and if you go there, you'll see that you have two different zip files, the child theme and the Avada theme. You wanna select the Avada theme. Once you do that, click open, and then install now. That will run for a few moments. It'll get everything ready. You'll get a confirmation message. It'll say everything is all set. It will probably ask you to install and activate a few of the plugins like the Fusion Slider and the Revolution Slider. Go ahead and do that. And once you do that, when you go back here to your themes, you should see installed. From there, you are all set and ready to go. Really quick, one more time, when you go to Add New Theme, Make sure that you do not select, we'll go upload theme, but make sure that you don't select the downloaded zip file. Unzip it, go to the file, Avada, and then wherever you unzipped it to, click on Avada theme, and then click on Avada zip. And that is what you want. If you look down here, it's about 12 megabytes. You don't want that big one because it will not work. Again, just click open, install now, it'll run its course, you should be good to go from there, and that is how you'll install themes. If in the future Avada is not your, if you don't like it, again, you can always go back to the Envato Marketplace. There are so many different themes out there, they're all really great. If you need any recommendations on any other themes, you can always send me an email. But we're going to stick with Avada for these purposes, and that is how it's done. Now that we have our menus established, we need to indicate to WordPress which one of our pages is our actual home page, and which page visitors that come to our website, what page they should actually land on. So go to Appearance, go to Customize. Okay, under Customize, it will show you the theme that you have selected. You can uh, name your site, site title, and also a tagline if you prefer. All I want you to worry about for right now is go to navigation, main navigation, I want you to put main, top navigation main, and these other two, don't worry about. Don't worry about widgets, and go to the very bottom, static front page. I want you to click static page for your front page. 
Your front page will be chiropractic. Well, that is what mine is. That's my home page. So if you click here, you can see all of the pages. So that new home page that you created, that will be your home page. It'll be static. If you do your latest post, whatever, if you do a blog, it's whatever your latest blog post will be. That's will be what people show up on. So if that's what you want, go ahead and put your latest post. However, for most people, put static page and select the home page that you want. For your post page, if you created a blog page, for instance, go ahead and select that one so that it WordPress will know what page it is that you want all of your posts to be posted to. Once you've done that, click Save, and then you can exit out of that. Now, go back to Appearance, go to Theme Options, and let's start working on the rest of your page. And we'll just go down this list. I'll show you every single option that I have selected because again, we're trying to duplicate my page. It would take way too much effort to show you every single option there, so you'll have to play with it a little bit. We'll start here with general. Under general, you actually have the option of importing all of the demo material from Avada all at once. And if you do that, it creates every single page that Avada has. Uh, I recommend you not doing that because you'll have to go back and delete a lot of different pages. But that is an option. Also, uh, agency, that's those other sub themes that they have. You can do that as well. The one thing I do want you to click on general is I want you to click on responsive design. Responsive simply means that regardless of what device you're using, your web page is going to look great. If you're looking on your iPhone, it'll actually scale it down so it fits your iPhone perfectly. And this is really a big deal, particularly for Google. If you want your page to rank well, it has to be actually be mobile friendly. That will be responsive design. Click that. Later on, when we set up our Google Analytics, I will talk to you about these tracking codes right here. For now, don't worry about it. Site width. Now, I have a wide format website, and that is what I have clicked. You can do that or boxed. Remember, boxed has the bars on the side, so go ahead and click uh, wide. If you do go with boxed, you can actually type in right here how wide you want the page, and if you change the number of pixels across you'll be able to see how it changes back and forth and so you just change your options and then you can go back and forth refresh your page here and you can see what it looks like if you want your home page to have the content with a sidebar you can indicate how big you want those a sidebar for instance let's go to my blog this is a page with a sidebar this is called a sidebar anything that goes over here on the side so if you want a page more like this, you can indicate how wide you want this area and then how wide you want the sidebar, content, and then the sidebar. Also, the third option you have is you can dictate if you want a content on both sides, if you want two sidebars, and that would be this option here. For my site, all you have to worry about is click wide. Header, I have my header at the top of the page right here. Currently I have this header selected for mine with the logo, the contact information. You can change this all you like. I'll click on this white one really quick. We'll save all changes. Remember anything that you change, uh, you want to save that or else it, it, if you click to another um, one of these tabs and you don't save it then it will not be there. Okay, so save yourself some frustration. I'll refresh this really quick and you'll be able to see the change in the header. So as you can see, it's all white as opposed to having that green bar across it. We'll change that back, save the changes. So simply decide which one you prefer the best. Going down here, these are all the options. If this is something that you want, go ahead and select it, but I'm only going to show you what I have for my page. Header content, contact info. You can put navigation. Uh, just leave it empty. Contact info and then uh, social links. That's what I have here, the contact info, the social links right there. That's what that's talking about. Contact info, email address. You can always do without those. Header background. 
I do not have a background image. A header background image would be something that would go across right here. If you want it to be uh, like a picture up in here for your background, you can choose that, but I do not. Finally, header social icons. I don't have anything selected here, anything customized, but you can change the color of the icons, the social icons. Again, that's gonna be these up here. Uh, I just left it as the default. Going to sticky header. I enable sticky header. This is a sticky header right here. Watch the header as I scroll down. You see how it came down like that? I'll go back up one more time. It follows you. It resizes and follows you all the way down. I like that. I think it's a nice little feature. If you don't want that, do not click sticky header. And that is all I have selected right there. You can also enable it for tablets and mobile phones. I would advise you to have your iPad handy so you can see what that looks like. Logo. Right here to upload your logo. It's very simple. All you need to do is go upload. You select your logo. And then, so for my library, it's right here. And then you just select that. And there it is. If you want uh, a lot of displays nowadays, they're uh, retina displays um, that just uh, higher resolution. If you Whatever the resolution is of your logo here, just double it. This will tell you how wide you want it, the height of it, where you want it to actually set. And then, of course, this says center. It only works on the top header five. Um, and then also the margins, logo left margin. So it's at 40. Basically, the margin, it's 40 over. So that's telling you how much padding you want here and over on this side as well. And then I got 31, 31. That's how much space I actually have right here in between the two. If you want less space here, okay, which I'll show you. Let's change this to 10, which is, you can see over here, that's the default. Let's just save changes. Over here, we'll refresh the page. And so you see how that, when I refresh the page, it went back to my original header. Also, the amount of padding in there is a lot less than what it used to be. So a lot of the, de the default settings here, they'll probably work for most people. Uh, a favicon is basically right here. It's the little icon that you see on the tab. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think I probably shouldn't have this. I should probably have some sort of legible logo that you can see that's better than this. But I have that for now, it works, and so I just leave it at that. Uh, you can choose whatever you like. In this part two video of theme options, I wanna finish showing you all of the options that I have selected. Now remember, I'm not going through all of the options and explaining them. I'm just showing you what I have selected and what you need to, to know to finish my website. Here on the left hand column here, menu, that's where we left off. Most of these options right here are designed for mobile options. I have everything here set by default. I have not changed anything here. Take a look on your mobile device, see what your website looks like, and if you wanna change anything, feel free to do that. The next one, page title bar. I do have a title bar. This is my blog right here. This is the title bar. You have the option of having a title right here. I have it placed to the left, and also I have the search bar selected so you can search. And that's what you see here. It's to the left. I have a background, which is that gray. And every other option that I have here, the display, the breadcrumb search bar, I have that checked, and I have it selected right there. Save and it'll look just like mine. Sliding bar, do not worry about that. Footer. This is the footer down here, this whole entire gray area. My footer, you can place widgets down here. You can see recent uh, posts, contact info, recent works. There's a lot of different options that you have and different things that you can place down here. Also, I have the copyright bar and the social icons as well. Those are all options that I'll show you right now. 
So I have four columns. I do have the footer widgets checked. That is checked. The padding I have at 20. The left and right padding I have at zero. Copyright bar I have checked. You can see, you can type in your own information right there. These are left blank. And then the social icons I have checked. However, I did not customize them. I left them all set on default settings. Sidebars, don't worry about that. Background, I don't have anything checked. Typography, this is a really important one. So on the typography menu, you have custom fonts, you have the Google fonts, and then standard fonts. By default, Avada comes with standard fonts to it. If you don't like those, you have Google fonts. Now Google fonts, there are a lot of different options for them. And if you have a certain font in mind that's not available through Google fonts, you can actually click here and override all of the defaults. And so you just upload them here and it shows you the type of file that you need for each one of these. However, I have the Google fonts selected for the body. I have Roboto, the menu, which is Oswald. This, this is the menu, that's the Oswald. The rest of everything else is the Roboto. And then Roboto Slab, which is a variation of that for the headings. And then the footer is Roboto Slab as well. I did not change any of the Google font settings. You can skip over standard because we're not using those. Font sizes. Now again, this is personal preference. These are the sizes that I have. The defaults are listed over here on the right. I have body font 16, main menu 22. I don't need to run through these. I'll just scroll very slowly so that you can see everything that I have selected as far as size goes. And so as you can see, you can change the size of font for every single different part of your websites, going from the headings down to the paragraphs, you name it, you can change the size of the font for everything. And so this can take you a little while to decide what you like, but these are my defaults right there. Font line heights, I'll show you these as well. A few variations from the defaults, but for the most part, pretty close to what comes standard. Okay, the next option we will change is the styling, which is, this is a lot of fun. I have mine as selected for the theme skin as light. If you look at my website, most of the margins, they're white. You can see here and here, it's white. If you choose dark, dark. We'll take a look at that really quick, show you what that looks like. It's not gonna look very good on mine because I don't have it all set up, but we'll refresh this page. And as you can see there, the top is dark. There's a lot more black in there. In the different areas. It can look really great just for my website. I don't have it set up that way. Change it back to light. Then also the predefined color scheme is green. So let's refresh this. Change it back to light. But as you can see all of these, uh, the different counters, the text, it's all green. All these icons right here, they're green. The header, it's green. So if you change this to, we'll just say blue, we'll save those changes. And if I refresh this, see it changed that, the header to blue. The text for the most part is blue. So more of the options are, are blue. That's what you can do right there and you'll probably do that right away. I'm going to change this back to green before I forget. The rest of these options, I do not have anything selected. So background, element, I don't have anything changed here. 
You can change that if you like. However, I do not have anything uh, changed there. Uh, short code styling, nothing there. Blog, just take a look here. I have the title of the blog. I do have the title bar selected. And then the blog layout large alternative. That's referring to what this looks like right here. So I have a large picture with a little bit of information right there. If I change this, I'll show you that. We'll just do a grid, for instance. Let's go up here, save. Now we'll refresh this. And so it basically just gives it a little bit different style. Depending on what you want, there are numerous different options for that. I'm gonna change this back. We have, what, about six different options. I added on, on large alternative. It's a blog archive, large alternative, pagination, number of columns, three, 40, excerpt length, that's basically how long this length is. So I have it 50 characters. And the rest of the options, you can see what I have checked. If you want comments, post the meta. That's basically this information right here. The date, author, title. I'm going to save that just to change it back to the different blog style. Portfolio. So portfolio, these are the options that I have, and then this is probably gonna be very different for you, but this is what I have. 20 items per page, the grid, spacing is 12, excerpt 285, pagination, unboxed, portfolio items, fixed. Okay, I have this box checked right there. Social sharing, checked. Related posts, checked. This is my portfolio under library. And so I have some health research reports right here. And so I have 20 of these per page. And you can scroll on these. These are downloadable reports that I have up here. And this is, I have reports here, but this is very good for if you're an artist, if you're a photographer, something like that, that you wanna show off your work or whatever it might be this would be what you want to do. Social sharing box. All of these are set by default. You can choose which ones you want. Save your changes. Social media. Uh, this would be where you actually type in your web address of any of the pages that are actually yours for any of these that you want to show. Okay, so if they do click on the icons, for instance, uh, right up here, it will know where to direct people to. I don't have anything on slideshows, elastic slider, lightbox, contact information. Yes, you want this. For, this is for Google Maps. It'll show the roadmap, uh, satellite hybrid terrain, how much width you want, 50%, uh, the height, top margin. I have my address of my, of my old office email, zoom level, how much you want it zoomed in or out. So I have that set at 13. And then remember I showed you the Google map on my contact page, I believe. And so see how this looks a little bit different than the standard Google page. So I did theme styling. You can just do default, info default. And that is it for contact. Search page. I don't think I have anything changed there. Extra. The only thing I have checked here is open social icons, a new window. Image rollover, I have that checked. And that is it there. Advanced options. I don't have anything checked there. WooCommerce, nothing. Custom CSS, nothing. Backup. This is a great place. Come here uh, often. Just back up your options. That will be right here. 
and then auto updates. If you go auto to updates, you can actually put in your information from the Envato marketplace when you download Avada. You can put in your information there, and if you do that, the Avada theme will automatically update, and you won't have to do that manually in the future. Those are all the options that we have for the theme options. If you just go ahead, go through each and every one of those, check where you need to. Uh, don't worry about you know what exactly you're doing because you'll you'll eventually learn all this stuff. You really will, it's, uh, especially if you play with it. But for right now, just check what you need to, and that is it. Are you ready to get started? Let's do our homepage now. So go to your dashboard. I told you in a prior lecture that you should actually create about four to five pages. Just give them a title, but and create those pages. So we went to pages over here. Let's go to all pages. And we created this one called home page. So go ahead and click the edit button. And here you are in the edit page. This is where all the magic is going to happen. I'm going to run you through every single option. The first thing I want you to do is click here on the page fusion builder up here at the top. This is a great feature which allows you to drag and drop uh, everything that you need into your web page. So stay there. Let me go over to my page. So your page is blank, and if you look at mine, I'll scroll down here. Everything that you see here, this is all the content for my home page. It probably looks like a lot, but I'll run you through it right now. A uh, few options, column options. Full width containers. Full width container basically means that any of the content that you have will span the entire length of the page. Going to here, this gray box, that's a full width container right there. This slider here, that's a full width container. It's basically just saying it's going from one side of the screen to the other. And then you can also divide up into different sections. First thing I want you to do is create a separator. So go to Builder Elements, click on Separator, and then all I want you to do is just drag it down and then when you see the gray, you can drop it. So I have two. I'm going to delete that one that I just dropped. Go on this little pin right here. That is your edit button. And this is what I want you to have. No style. We have several different styles there. And that's all I want you to do. Hit save. Now I want you to create a full width container. You can see it right here. So go back here to column options, full width container, and drag this right underneath where you have the uh, separator. I'm not going to drop it because I already have it here. And if we click here on the edit button, this full width container is this right here. Okay, so the color is black you can click here and select black or you can just type in this number right there to get black these are the options that I have selected I want you to select the same options padding left 0.5 padding right yes yes and then hit save I'm gonna hit cancel because I already have it we're going to create this text right here. And one of the things about the text, take a look right here when I go over these letters. Do you see how that pops up? You do want results, right? So that's a, what's called a tool tip. And I want to show you how to do that. It's just a little added something that you can do to your website if you like. I kind of like it. It emphasizes some of the text that's already there. To create this box right here, Go to Builder Elements, and then see the text box right here. Click on that, drag it right below the full width container, and drop it there. I already have one there, so again, I will not be dropping it. And then, once you have that there, it'll be blank. Click on the Edit. You can type in all your information right here. Uh, on this screen, there are two different screens. Text, 
which this is more of the coding part. I don't want you to worry about this if you're not familiar with coding, but keep it on visual. Then you can just type in whatever you like right here. You can change all the different options, the sizing, the alignment. However, I told you about this tooltip. You see how we have tooltip right here? And so to get a tooltip, click on this icon right here. And this is what's called a short code. Avada has a lot of different short codes that you can have that provide just a little bit extra. So we'll click on here on tooltip. And then whatever you want that text to be, that pop-up that I showed you, I'll go over here one more time. So that text, you do want results, right? So that's the pop-up. And so you just, you do want results, right? And so that's what you would put in there. The position would be the top. It pops up when you hover over it. And then you just do insert short code. And once you do that, it'll pop up right here. The text that right here, lasting results by getting to the cause of your health problem. If you can see, I actually have that in between these boxes of that tooltip. Okay, do you see that? And then once you're done with that, just hit save. And that is that part. So the next thing I have is this green button right here. If I click right there, it will send you to another page. Okay, so to get this button, go up here to button, click on that, drag it right underneath your text, and then just drop it there. And then go to edit. This is the URL that you'll type in where you want that, if people click on that button, this is where it'll take them. I have a green button, choose any color you like. It's a large button, a three-dimensional, it's pill. Okay, you can have a different um, shapes. And then button target. Basically this means self, it will open, uh, it'll open on the same page, or blank, it'll actually open up a different window. So depending on what you want, but that's what I have. Button text, schedule your appointment, and that that's all the options I have for that. So click save. And if you click save, this is the button that you'll have. So it's the pill shape, it's green, it's three dimensional, has a drop shadow. Sometimes to just even out the spacing, what I'll do is I will drop a text box. So for instance, right here within that full width container, I just went up here to text box and I dragged it right underneath it. And that'll just give it a little bit extra spacing. So if I click here, we don't have anything, but it just gives a little extra spacing. And then also I have this separator. Okay, no style again. Top margin's 15 and 15. And again, that just gives us a little bit extra spacing between this container right here and this new one that we're gonna create right there. Let's get another full width container and we're going to create this part right here with these three different icons. Go back up, column options, full width container, click on that, drag it right underneath what you just did, the other container, and drop it. Here you can choose the color that you like. These are the options that I have. No repeat, left top, scroll, solid. Okay, just look at my options, copy what I'm doing, and then hit save. So you can see the color options. It's this white as opposed to the black like we did here. And now we want to do these content boxes. So if you go up here to builder elements, content boxes. It's basically saying we're going to make some boxes and put something inside of it. Technically, these are three boxes right here. OK, 
Okay, so take the content boxes, click on that, drag it into the full width container, not outside of it, right inside of it, drop it, click on that to edit it. Box layout, icon on top of title. The icon is on top of the title. Large, I have it left. Number of columns, there's gonna be three different columns, however many columns you like. Put that in there, up to six. And then if you scroll down, content boxes. So we're gonna go through each one of these content boxes individually. So here, I have family chiropractic. Scroll down here. I have the family icon selected in red. You can have some animations here. I do not have any selected. You can also change all the colors of the icons. I just left it black. And at the very bottom, you can do the same thing that we did before. I put in some text. I went ahead and did another tool tip here. So I went to, clicked right there. Scrolled down to the tool tip. I put in all that information like I did before. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. That's the tool tip. That's right, it's for you. So tool tip title, that's right, it's for you. This was inside of it, chiropractic is for everyone. That is in green. And then anything outside of these two boxes, the tool tips, is the rest of the text. It's not animated at all. Then you can go to, if you scroll all the way down, go to your next content box and do the same thing that you just did. I put in the title, I chose the icon, I didn't change any of the options as far as the color or flips. I always click on visual. So here I do not have a tool tip. I simply just change the color of this. You change the color by going text color, selecting any color that you like. It's very simple. And then finally go down to the third content box, comfort and convenience, select your icon, do what you just did before. When you're all said and done with that, make sure that you hit save. And once you hit save, You'll have your content boxes right here with the three columns inside of the full width container and it will look exactly like this. So the next thing, this full width background with the parallax effect. Parallax simply means if you look as I scroll up and down, you see how it scrolls through that picture. I think it's a very neat effect and it's very simple to do. So to get you there, create another full width container, go back up to the top, column options, full width container, click on that, and drag it, drag it down right underneath the content boxes all by itself, drop it there. Now this time you're gonna click on this editing button right here with the full width container. What you need to do is Select an image. If I if this remove wasn't there, it would just be like select image. So let me go ahead and edit this. This menu right here, this is your media library. Anytime that you have any pictures, this is where you'll upload it to. So if you already have it within your media library, you can select it. However, if you're going to upload, go right here, upload file, select it, it has to be less than 10 megabytes. And once you do that, it will actually bring you back to the screen. This picture, if you look over here, 1100 by 733, that is a wide enough picture that will go all the way across the screen. So do that, and then insert into page. As far as the alignment, do center, and do large. Insert into page, I'm just gonna click out, and it'll put it right here. Background repeat, no repeat, left top. Fixed background is fixed, but giving a parallax effect. 
That's the option I want you to choose. Border style solid. I think these are all done by default. I don't think I changed any of those. Hit save. And once you hit save, okay, you'll have this full width container right here. Nothing really in it. But if you go back, it should be there. And just a side note, anytime that you do any of this stuff on this page, I want you to always go up here and you know save your changes. Okay, anything that you do, uh, there will be a box up here to save any of the changes that you do. Do that often. If you don't want your website to be seen by people right away, you can always go here, edit, publish. You can do pending review or draft, okay, either one, and then hit, always hit update. And that will, that'll, well, save your website, okay? Anytime you make any changes to your website, make sure that you hit update or else it will not be saved. Also, page attributes, let me just cover this really quick. Uh, nope, okay, this is a standalone here. And then template, just do 100% width. So let's continue going through this. The next thing, full width container, right here, we're going to do this part right here. Go back up to the top, full width container under column options. Take that, drag that underneath what we just did, drop it here. I don't have any of these options changed, it's all defaults. We're going to get another text box, we have our uh, builder elements. Get a text box, drag that down, and put it right inside your full width container. Click on visual if it's not already. You can type in all of your information right here, change the colors, change the size, save it. And it will look just like this. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the separator. So within your full width container, we have the separator. Go back up, builder elements, go to your separator, drag the separator down, drag it right there, and then let's edit that separator. I have a double border solid, top margin five, bottom 20. That's all you need to do, hit save, and when you do that, you'll have this double border separator right there. Let's create this next part. Hit cancel. Okay, so within the full width container of what we've been working with, this is where we're gonna have three different content boxes right here. To do that, go to column options, and we're gonna select one third. We have three different boxes. One third, one third, one third. And all you have to do is drag those down, down here, where you want them. And that's all you have to do for that. Now that you have your three boxes set up there, uh, really quick, one thing I want to show you, if you ever want to adjust the size of these boxes in the future, if you just click more, plus or minus, that will actually change the size of the boxes, so that will save you some time in the future. So let's click here on the edit. This is kind of important right here. If you have multiple boxes, last column, that's basically saying this box right here is in the last column. Okay, so we have three columns here, and this is the last one. And so when it asks you, is it the last column? No, it's not. Column spacing, yes. No repeat, top left, zero, solid. Hit save. Do the same thing for the next one. Okay, it's no, yes, no, hit save. And then for the last one, last column, yes. Select yes for that last column. Okay, yes, everything is the same right here. 
Once you do that, you have these three boxes. And then what we can do is go back up to Builder Elements, get a text box, drag that down and drop it right inside that box. And that, go to Visual like I have, and then right here you can do all of your different, type in what you like, save it. I did the same thing here, another text box. And then right here, let me click here. This is what's called a toggle. So if you go to the top, we have toggles right there. Take the toggle, drag it down here into this box, and this is what a toggle is. It's basically this box right here, and you just have some text. If you click on these buttons, it opens up and just shows you a little bit extra. Kind of a neat little feature there. So for my toggle, I don't have anything written here. First toggle, um, that's going to be the headline text right there. Open by default, that simply means that whenever your page loads, it will already be open, just like this. It'll look just like that. So we have our header, the extra text, it's already open. Put in your text right there. Then go to your next toggle, depending on how many you have. If you want to add a new toggle, you just go down right here. So you could have five toggles, I have four. The next headline, open by default, I put no on this one. Put in my text, go to the next one, same thing. Title, no, text. And once you're done, hit save, I hit cancel, and that is what you'll come up with. So we're halfway done with our first page. Let's do one more full with container. Go to the top, go to column options, full with container, drag that down right underneath what we just did. Okay, you can see here that I have this green background. If we click here on the full with container, the edit button, I have this background right here. Let me click on edit. You can see also, it's just a generic uh, colored background. It's just an image. Again, it's 1100 by 803. It doesn't really matter the height necessarily, but you want to get the width uh, wide enough so that it doesn't distort. And so center, large, insert into page. Once you do that, it'll show up here. And then the rest of the background fix with parallax effect again. And everything else is by default. And that will give you this green background right there. Just like we did here up top with the three different containers. Remember we went to Builder Elements and the content boxes. So create, th if you want to do three videos, that's all I did. I just uh, pulled down three more content boxes just like that. I selected no, same options as before. And just remember that the last one, you want to make sure that you put yes. And then what I did was I created, I actually brought down three text boxes. So again, builder elements, text box. I dragged that down. Now let me just tell you really quick. For the text boxes here, these videos, they are actually hosted with a company called Wistia. Wistia is a uh, video hosting company. I really like them. They have a lot of different options. These videos are what's called embedded. So I went to Wistia, I created the videos, they gave me the code, and I simply dropped it into the text box. So I'll show you that right here. This is a little bit more technical, but if you go this time click on text, 
this was the code that they gave me. I just copied and pasted, put it right here and hit save and the video automatically shows up. Now for most people, if you wanna just do a YouTube video, go to the Avada options right here, choose a short code. There's the YouTube all the way at the bottom and also uh, Vimeo or Vimeo, I've heard it said two different ways. And if you type there, click on YouTube for instance, Then you can plug in your ID. It shows you exactly what to plug in, how big you want it, okay, whether or not to autoplay it, and then insert short code. And if you insert the short code, it'll automatically populate right here. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, if you'd rather just have, you could just do one video here, just do like a um, column options. You could actually just do a text box drag it right into the full width container and just have one big video if you wanted. And I've seen that done, that looks really great as well. So hopefully you have that part. After we've created this section right here with the videos, let's create our next section going down on the website. This is another full width container right here. We're gonna do, I'm gonna show you really quick how to uh, do a contact form and also how to do these bulleted points right here. Go back to our options right here. Do another full width container. Don't change any of the options, just leave it as it is. And then go ahead, go back up, column options. And then we're going to drag two of those down here. You can see this first one that I have, of these boxes is three fifths and this is two fifths. So it's gonna fill the whole screen but they're going to share that. Again, you can always click here, make it bigger or smaller. Now on this side of the screen, we did another, take a look here. I did what's called a title. Okay, this is the size is two left. The separator is single. And then I put in visual, I put in the text. So title is basically this right here. It's a title and it has this little line right there just to give it another look. So you take that title, drag it down, put it inside of that container. It's its own thing. And then I have the check bo checklist box. Same thing, go back up to the top, checklist, Grab that, drag it down here, and then let's go ahead and edit that. For the bullets, you can choose any one. I have stars, and that's selected. You can choose any one of these icons that you like. Okay, that's gonna be the color. I changed it to green. If you want the icon in a circle, no. I have a medium size, and for the checklist, just put in your text. That's the first item, second item, so on and so forth. Hit, click save. Once you click save, this is what you're gonna have. Just each one of the points right there. If you want to add any more checklist, just add new item right at the bottom. Always hit save. For the other side, right here, again it's two fifths. We created this, just did a font awesome. Okay, font awesome. I selected this little pencil. This is to schedule your appointment. Did it in a circle, yes, and the size of it medium hit save. So if you go back to my site, there it is. Pencil, it's circle. And then right next to it, I did a text box. Request an appointment. 
change the color on that one, hit save. And again, request an appointment now. Did a little separator just to give it, if anything looks too bunched up, go ahead and put in a separator between them. I don't have any style to it. It's just a blank separator. It's okay. It's invisible, I guess, but there's no style. And so that'll just give a little bit of space between what you create here and then whatever goes next. So separator is always a good thing to use for extra spacing. Cancel. This final contact box right here. In Avada, they have a default contact page where they have their own contact system. Um, but if you're creating a page like this and you want just a contact box in the middle of the page, what you have to do is actually get something called a plugin. The plug, so this is a plugin right here to put this in there. And it's called Contact Form 7. I'll click right here. Contact, so I did a text box and then I put this code in there. Contact Form 7. To get the contact forms, what you need to do is go to Plugins and then Add New. On the plugin page, go ahead and type in Contact Form 7. And that's the first thing that popped up. Contact Form 7. Um, I, it's already installed on mine. So you, let me show you on this one just to show you what it would look like. You'd hit Install Now. You'll see this page right here. And then to get it to work, you just click Activate Plugin. Once you do that, you'll actually see over here, and now I'm not gonna activate this plugin because I don't want it. But you'll see over here in the left-hand column, contact, you'll see this will pop up and then go to contact form. So you just add new, add new. You can name the form if you like. Uh, that's just so you can keep track of different forms that you create. Now this one has, uh, this form is gonna have your name, email, the subject and the message and then a submit button and that's exactly what you see right here send and so all I did I didn't do anything fancy I just click save and then let me go to the one I already have created this was the one I already had created right here contact form one and then all you need to do once you have that, come over here to the short code, click, double click on that, right click, copy that, and then what you need to do is go back to your pages, and you need to go back to the edit page. So. I'm gonna go right back here to, you would go back to your home page, the one that you created. I'm gonna click right here. If you go back here, remember we created this text box. We drag the text box down from the top up here, builder elements. We created a text box, we click there. We dragged it into this container. And then all you need to do is just click in here, paste it, and then that code, that short code, will go right there. Click Save, and once you do that, you will have a contact form right there. Now, I should have shown you this. Let me go back, because I want to show you the options so that contact form is actually useful to you. Let's go to Edit on that contact form. Click here on this tab here, mail. This is going to actually, uh, these are the options to send that message where you want it to. Uh, just go through these different options here, your email from, okay, your message. These would be the different messages that pop up. So once they click submit, it'll have a message. Your message was sent successfully, thanks. You can go through all these and change that how you like.
but then always go over here to the right hand side always click save so up till now we've done everything in this box right there I showed you how to make a contact page these last two things are the last thing I have to show you and this is gonna be very similar to what we just did so this is what we just did here we had our full width container create another full width container we're gonna have this really cool background that's gonna have the parallax effect right there I love it so again you would go in to either your media library if you already have it uploaded or you go to upload image find the image upload it again you can see the dimensions right here it's a large image so that it will span the entire length insert the image right here at the bottom that is what you'll have all the options are the same make sure we select this one right here fixed background is fixed giving a parallax effect hit save and then um, bring down another text box do the same thing that we did before you can see here I have the tooltip also right there again for reference this is what I have the tooltips pretty neat I like those and then go back up to the top we're gonna have three more content boxes right here okay so just go back up here one-third drag that down bring it right in here and then what we're going to do once you have your three remember in our options the first two will be no the last one we're gonna select yes we're gonna do testimonials so three testimonials here with their picture the testimonial and their name at the bottom so go to the top builder elements and then testimonial so click on that drag it down into the box right here and let's edit that so the design I have clean you can check out what classic is on your own I didn't change any of the colors and then let's add this testimonial so I have the name there which we can see here at the bottom and then I uploaded their picture and then as far as the border radius that would be if you want it round which I have selected round and then the testimonial right there I kept it really simple hit save and there you have it do that three times for this testimonial that testimonial and it'll look just like this and that's it for that section the final section that we have we're gonna do these counters really quick create one last full width container go up to the top column options full width container drag that down and bring it underneath I have this text box right here for this text there and then the last thing I have is are these really cool counter boxes all you have to do go to the top builder elements and then counter box take that drag it down here and then the options that I have number of columns four green the size of the title the icon size 50 and then once you created done the style each counter box come in here individually then you can put in the value um, percentage you can do these I have after the counter count up less hospital admissions 
So we have the 60% less hospital admissions. I have the icon selected right in here, right there, a little hospital. And count up, meaning like when you scroll down, it goes from zero up to 60. And just do that for each one of these. Go to counter box, the value 59, 59%. It's the same thing, you just repeat it four times. Always make sure that you hit save afterwards. And so anytime that somebody comes to your web page and they see this, let's see if I can do that. Let me refresh the page really quick and see if you can see the animation. Because it's pretty neat. It won't actually count up until you scroll down and you see it. So at zero, and they count up. So that's pretty neat. There you have it. That is the first page. In this lecture, I will show you how to make your footer and also your sidebars. So this is the footer of our web page right here. To get started with that, go to your dashboard. The first thing I want you to do is go to Appearance, Theme Options. So click on Footer and then click Footer widgets, go ahead and make sure you have that checked. Depending on how many widgets you want, you'll have four. We had changed these options previously, but just so you know, I'll go over them one more time. Also, if you want something in the copyright options, go there. And everything else is there by default. Now once you finish that, go back over here under Appearance, and once you go to Widgets, Basically anything in the sidebar or in the footer is considered a widget. So when you come over to this page, you should these are all the available widgets. Now I'll have a few more. All the Avada ones come by default. There are a few here that have Jetpack. That is a plugin. I can show you a Jetpack later. For your footer and your uh, sidebar, Everything that you need will be over here. So blog sidebar. Go ahead and click on that. So I actually have three different items for my sidebar. And all you need to do is look over here, see what you want. So I have Avada tabs. I have some text. And then I also have an Avada the Facebook like box. Avada tabs, that shows your most recent articles for your blog. That is this right here. So it just shows you a few of the most recent articles, most popular and most recent. It's not showing right now, but you can have a Facebook box right here that shows all your friends. A lot of different options. Just look over here and decide what you want for that. Change the options as you like. Always hit save, and as soon as you hit save, that will appear for your sidebar. Now if you want to create a different sidebar. You can absolutely do that if you like. Just go over here, select new, and you can have a new sidebar. So for your footer, if you look over here, footer widgets. One, two, three, and four. You actually have five and six if you like. Those just come by default. But remember in our options we selected four. So each one of these spaces here is considered a widget. Footer widget number one, I have the Avada Facebook light box. These are the options that I have with 268, light colored, show the faces. Play with that, see what works for you. Footer widget number two, I have recent posts. So you can see my most recent post right there. And then it shows a total of three posts and the date as well. The last one, footer widget number three, I have contact information. So my address, phone number, email, where you're actually sent to, always click save. Then the last one, recent works. 
That would be for if you have a portfolio, such as pictures, anything like that. And that is what you can see right here, most recent works. So you can click on any one of these and it will take you to these different articles that I had created. When it comes to um, your footer, just take a look at these all these different options here. Play around with them, see what you like. All you have to do, again, just take it, drag it, and then just drop it wherever you want it. It's as simple as that. Very easy to do, and that is it. In this lecture, I will show you how to create a Fusion slider for your first page. A Fusion slider is this slider that you see here. It's a great looking slider. It has this animated video that you can put to it. You can have just a static background, just a picture if you like. These words right here, they pop up when you come to the website. It's very attractive. I like it a lot, and I'm going to show you how to make it. If you're in your dashboard, this is where we left off. We finished with the counter boxes from our last lecture. Go here to Fusion Sliders and go to Add or Edit Sliders. Now if you want to add your first slider, all of the options will be right here. However, I already created that slider and I called it Grass. So these are the same settings that you'll see over here. Let me click there so you can see what I did. So I called it Grass and that's just for my reference. Short code, just call the grass again, 100% width, it means it goes all the way across the screen. The height of it, I put 700 pixels, which would be this height right here, that's 700. So if you want to make it larger or smaller, change those numbers accordingly. Parallax effect, that gives that scrolling effect, just like that. Check autoplay, slide loop, Animation is fade, slideshow speed 7000, animation speed 600, and that will do it. Once you're done there, update or save. That setting was simply just to create the slider. Now if you want to, what you have to do now is you actually have to make slides for the slider. So go over here, edit or, or add or edit slides. When it comes to sliders, you'll see a lot of people, they use three different sliders. For instance, you come to a home page and three different images will come up and it'll slide in between them. I really recommend you just doing one. I think one is a lot cleaner. It will hold the person's attention better and it is just, you're able to get your message out there better. Coming back here to the slides, I called it grass. So go ahead and add nude slide and I'm going to click here edit because these will be the same options. So after you hit that add new slide, these are the options that I have. For background type, I have a self-hosted video. You can choose from an image, YouTube, okay, or Vimeo. So I self-hosted that, meaning I uploaded that video to this website. To do that, here are the, are the video options. Video MP4 upload. Click on browse. It has to be under 10 megabytes, but you can just take that any video that you like and you can bring it, just drag it right here and drop it. And that will drop it into your media library. And we've seen that a few times with standard pictures in the past. Here I have one video. And that is my grass video. You can see all of the settings right here. So just insert into post. I'm going to say or hit save all changes. And once you do that, you'll see the web address to your video right there after you've uploaded it. The only problem with self-hosting your video is this, is that on mobile devices such as your iPhone, it still does not support the video to play. And so you have to substitute it with a standard picture. If you were to use YouTube or uh, Vimeo, uh, you don't have that issue. And so what I did was I just found a similar picture that looked like the grass right here. So it's just a static picture. It looks like grass. 
and it looks really great on the mobile device. You don't have the same effect, but it still looks great. And if you were to do that, just do full size and then insert into post. Uh, I don't think that you should have a video that plays sound uh, when you first come onto a website. I think that's really, really annoying. Go ahead and mute it, autoplay it, loop, yes. Uh, hide video controls, yes. I have it centered. Now, here are the letters. Procrastination is the thief of health. That's right here, the larger letters. So that's the heading. The heading font size, how big it is, is 75. And then the color, the default, is this right here. And so that's the color for white. Heading background color, that's what I have right there. That's that transparent black. And then the caption, you deserve to feel great now. That is underneath, a little bit smaller. Font size 24, which I have right here. Just copy these settings if you want to do the same thing as me. Have it a full slide. And once you do all of that, the most important thing that you have to do is come up here. I, it says preview changes, but it'll probably have save changes. And then hit update. Preview changes, anytime that you see this, if you change an option, hit preview changes, a new window will come up and it'll show you what you have. But until you actually hit update, it will not actually save. So updating is really important. So just click update. Once you've done that, what you can do is go back to the page that you created. So go over here to pages. I'm gonna go all, go back to the home page, go edit. And now for that uh, slider to pop up on your page, because if you don't select this, your page will pop up and all of this right here will not be there. This will be at the top of the page. So go all the way to the bottom of your page here. Go to sliders. Slider type. That is a fusion slider. So choose that from the list. And then go down here to fusion slider. Select the grass. I have one other one there. Select grass. And then go all the way back up to the top. Hit update. And once you do that, you have your fusion slider. So I encourage you to exper experiment with that, try different things, see what you like. I think Fusion sliders are, they're a lot of fun and they make your page look great. In this lecture, I would like to finish by showing you the Fusion options. So on your edit page for your first page, go all the way to the bottom and you'll see the Fusion options. Now we used these options uh, previously for the Fusion slider, which was right here. So any changes to sliders that you like, this is where you will access those. Let me just show you each option that I have selected for each one of these for my first page, just so you can replicate mine. So click on page, no. Go to the header. And again, I'm just going to scroll through these really quick so you can get an idea of what I have selected. And you can copy it if you like. For the footer, just default settings. Sidebars, no sidebars on, a, on my homepage. Everything here is default. I don't have a portfolio. And page title bar, we're going to hide it on this page. Hide. Those are default. And the rest are default. And those are the fusion options for our page one. In this video, I'd like to show you how to make your about page. If you go to meet the doctor, this is my old about page that I had created for myself. So here's a picture of me, handsome looking guy right there. A lot of this I have already shown you. However, I will go over it. Go up here to edit page. Remember on any page that you're on, if you go to edit page, that will take you to your edit page right here. So meet the doctor. So this is pretty standard. I've shown you this before. Go here, three-fifths. Here is two-fifths. 
go ahead and just drag and drop those down here to create them also we just have two titles um, boxes right here for both of those just put in meet the doctor the only thing that it's really new is this one the person and also the flip boxes right here so let me skip to that a person all you have to do is put in your name uh, the information that you want the title your picture select it from your media library or upload it as needed when you're done there go ahead hit save I'll hit cancel and that will come up with a similar image just like this also I didn't show you on that same edit page where I was just at if you go down a little bit further you can have your social icons as well over here I have the toggle switches I already showed you how to make those as well and that's what we see right here is the toggle the flip boxes those are new flip boxes is an option that you have where if you go over them it, you, you can have an animation where they actually flip over right here it just changes colors and has different text so very simple to make those go up to builder elements select the flip boxes drag that down here drop it go to edit you can choose the number of columns how many boxes you would like I have three so the time is now that is for the front side heading if you skip down to the flip box front side content is down here that is the quote that I have I think the only thing backwards about this is I think that the front side heading and the content should be back to back but it's not so don't con get confused about that we have the flip box the backside heading we have the actual text right there and if you scroll down just a little bit you can choose your icon I change the color of the icon to this light aqua green color no no flip no rotation no spinning the width and the height are both 35 animation none and then go down to your next flip box do the same thing that we just did repeat that change the color as you'd like I have a different icon a different color once you're done hit save and this is the end result right there has a little bit different color for each icon very simple to do continue scrolling all I did here for this book was I dragged down some a one third and a two third the frame there I dragged down an image frame and then this is just the text box to create that so this is a testimonial I went up here grabbed the testimonial dragged it down here selected clean added a new testimonial so it's right here put in the person's name selected the gender or the avatar so it's male if you put female this will be a female border radius 2 and I just put in the testimonial hit save and that's what it looks like so that is how you make your about page or how I created mine you can make one similar to it it's very simple and there you have it now in this lecture I will show you how to make a portfolio page mine is titled library page so I'll click right there So my portfolio page is a page that is full of health research articles and these are all uploaded PDFs with pictures and links to the articles that anybody can come to my website and download and they have a lot of useful information. Now portfolio it can be used for artists, photographers, you name it, cooks, anybody that wants to show off their work that is what a portfolio is for and so I'll show you how I set up mine 
Uh, however, for the way that you do it will probably be very different because again, I uploaded a lot of PDFs. And so if you click over here, we have the slide over there and click on this little icon, it'll take you to a separate page where these this PDF is hosted and you can look over that and download it if you like. Okay, so we have the portfolio page and then we have links basically to a lot of different pages. And so what this looks like, if you go to edit page, this is what the page actually looks like. All I have is I have a separator and then I have this title page with another double sided separator. And that's all I have here. So the page itself is actually very, very basic. I don't have anything else selected there. And so to get the different pictures up here, it's just like a blog. Every time you blog, you have the static blog homepage, but then you have links to all the different articles. To do that, anytime you want a new portfolio page, go over here to Portfolio, Add New. I'm just going to click on Portfolio because I already have my articles uploaded. So all those articles are right here. So it's just like creating a brand new page for every single one of those articles. So this actually took a good while to uh, put together. Okay, so I'm going to click on Edit. And then here I put a little bit of descriptive text in there. However, to get that picture there, go here to Set Featured Image. In your case, because you're brand new, you will go to Upload Files. Mine is already there, so I'll go to Media Library. Okay, so here's mine, the cervical curve. You can change this however you like. And then Set Featured Image. So when you set the featured image, that's what will show up here. And also that's what shows up here. Now these other options, in order to actually go to the PDF, what I had to do was go over back over here, go to my, add new, and then I had to select the file itself, the PDF, and I dropped it there. So I'll go to my library and show you that PDF. Okay, so here we go, the cervical curve PDF. I'll click on that really quick. Go there. It automatically assigns it a URL or a web address of where that file is found. Click on that, double click, copy that, and then when you're back here on that editing page for the cervical curve, let me show you where to enter that for it to show up. So I'm going to go really slow because in the custom fields here, there are a lot of different options and, and it can get really confusing really fast. So these are all defaults. Keep scrolling down. This one right here, image rollover icons. I put a link, icon target, yes, and this is the target. And this is where I copied, I pasted that web address for the PDF. So if you go back here, it has the rollover with the link. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this PDF page. Now keep scrolling down, keep following along with these options here. Just make sure that everything that I have, you have as well if you want it to be similar to mine. And hopefully I'm not going too fast for you. Project URL, copy and paste that same web address there. Project URL right here, do the same thing. View project, view project, yes. Like I said, there's a ton of different options here and I'm just showing you what I did. Okay, so that's it. Now, this setup where we have how it is right now, 
that is actually controlled by what we did here under appearance and theme options. I showed you the theme options and I wanted you to select everything that I had and so it should come out just like mine. However, if you have any issues and you want to change something, go back over here to the theme options, down to portfolio. I have selected 20 items per page. I have it in the grid format. Spacing is 12. And that's why it looks just like this. I have like 17 reports here, but it's in a grid format. And so if I had more reports, it would just keep going down to the 20 per page. And that is how you set up a portfolio page. Setting up a very simple contact page is an easy thing to do. If you click on contact us on my page, what you have by default is a very clean, simple page that has a Google map at the top with my address to the office, a little bit of text, a picture of the office so people can see my hours, and then finally a request your appointment or a contact form right here. And that's what I will show you how to make. All right, go back to your dashboard, click on pages, create a new one if you need to, but I'm going to edit my current page that I have. Now because this is a contact page, what I would like for you to do is over here on the right hand page attributes, I want you to select the template contact. Up till now we've done 100% width, but I want you to choose the contact because before, I want you to choose the contact template right here because if you remember before when we went to appearance and we went down to the contact and we put in all of your information in the theme options so we did roadmap the the width height top margins put in the address our email how far zoomed in it is the theme styling those were all things that I had you check before because coming back to our page this is the size of the map that is the address right there the theme styling this is a little bit different than the typical Google map it has a little bit more style to it and also you put in your email address because it has this form here and that is where it's going to send the information to. This part here and this is standalone. If you come back here to your edit page under contact, if you look at it, the map, there's nothing here about a map and down here there's nothing about a contact form. And so everything in between the map and the contact form are things that I added. To add them, I did just like I did before. I did two titles. This was two thirds, one third. I put in two titles right there. I just dragged them down from the builder elements. You can see it's a title. I put in the information that I wanted. I dragged down a text box underneath there. And then I did an image frame over here. You can see the image frame. I dragged it down, put in the information. Another text box right there. The only thing different that we haven't seen yet was I did a social links within this box. Okay, and you can see that the social link right here, dragged it down there. I'll click here for the options. So they're boxed, five pixels. They're on the right. And then I put in my information and that is what you can see right here. So if you want those, that's how you do it. Besides that, that's as easy as it gets. We're done with our contact page. Come over here and save your changes and click update. And when you do that, 
you're going to have this incredible page right here. So just make sure that you do go into your appearance and go under the theme options. Click the contact so you can update all your information. And the only th other thing that you need to do is when you create a new page, go over here to templates, select the contact, and you'll have your contact page. The last and final page that I will show you how to set up is your blog page. Your blog page will be set up very similar to your portfolio page that I had set up before, or that's what I call my library page. I click on blog. This is my blog right here. The blog has a sidebar. It has links to all my different articles. To get started with that, go to appearance. We did this before, but I want to just show you one more time. Go to blog. You can give it a title if you like. Page title bar, I have that checked. Large alternative. Blog archives, large alternative. Page nation. Three. The spacing is 40. Exert length is 50. I have this box checked. This one checked. Featured image checked. Comments, if you want those to show up, check there. The meta, I have that checked as well. Save changes. And your page will look just like this. We have the title, the meta information right there. This is the layout. That's the large alternative. It has a 50 word excerpt. If you want to change any of the way it looks, I will change, I showed you before, I'll change this one more time. Let's go to timeline under blog layout. I'll hit save changes. Refresh this page. And so it just gives it a little bit different look to it. They break it down by the month. And so that option is available. If you want to change it back, just go back to your options. Blog layout, large alternative is what I like. Always save your changes. Refresh the page, and it'll look just like that. To create your page, from your dashboard, you go to Pages, Add New if you haven't already, which you should have. So we're going to go to our blog. That's our post page. Our post page, we selected that by going to Appearance and Customize. These are all options I have shown you before, so if you haven't followed along up till now, I will show you. So under Customize, Post Page, whatever page is your blog page, select it. So mine is called Blog. Go to Save, and then when you come back here, you will see this Post Page. So go to Edit. For my blog, for the first page, I don't have any text. No parent here. For the fusion options, for the sidebar, default sidebar, the page itself, nothing. Header, I did decide to have that there. Default, the footer is default. If you decide that you do not want to have the page title bar shown on any page, you can always come down to the Fusion options and have it either show or you can hide it. And this goes for any page that you have. So for instance, if you go, this is an individual post for your blog. If you decide that you do not want this to show on that particular page, you just go to Edit Post. Scroll all the way down to Fusion Options, and you can decide to not show those. For your blog, to create a post, it's very simple. Go back to your options, 
and over here on the side okay so we've done pages so far but go to post I'll go to all post but you'll create a new post for any blog entry that you want and right here this shows you every single article that I've written in the past this was the one we were just looking at I'll go edit and this is gonna be set up just like any other page that you have I believe that I've made my blog a little bit more I don't want to say complicated but I put more into it than some people some people just have plain text I always have the text and then I always do a an image and do a lot of other things to it as well so if you want this image right here set the featured image the featured image is this photo right here that'll show up on top. So that is how you set up your blog. It's very simple. As you add more posts to your blogs, they will automatically populate. And the more people visit them, if you have the sidebar um, widget right here, that will populate as well. And it'll also show up on your footer automatically as you add more and more posts. So that's how you set up your blog post. It's very simple. If you have any questions, just let me know. In this lecture, I'd like to cover plugins and show you every single plugin that I have installed on my website. Now let me tell you just a moment about plugins. I choose plugins that I feel make my website uh, work a little bit better. They provide options that I want to offer to the people that visit my website. And so not every uh, plugin that I use will necessarily be good for what you want it for. I won't cover all of the specifics of the plugins. I'm simply going to show you the ones that I have installed. If you have more questions about the plugins, I'm going to just ask that you do a Google search and really see how they work, how they make your website better. So I won't go into the specifics. I simply want to show you what I have plugged in. There are a couple of plugins that I will go over that will improve your SEO and I'll go over that later in another lecture. From your dashboard, go to plugins. You can go add new if you want to add a plugin. I will go to install plugins and again I'm just going to go through the list of plugins that I have installed and you can click on them and decide for yourself if that is something that you want for your website. So Askimet, Auto Optimize, Contact Form 7, I showed you that if you want a contact form anywhere. Image Optimizer, a Facebook button widget. Fusion Core, that comes standard with Avada, you have to install that. Google Analytics by Yoast. Jetpack, that is made by WordPress. Layer Slider is also an Avada plugin. MailChimp. P3 plugin performance profile that will show you exactly what's using the most resources. That's a good one to have. Revolution slider that comes with Avada. Sumo me. W3 total cache. I absolutely recommend you having that one for sure. Wistia WordPress plugin. That's to host those videos on my first page. WordPress SEO. This is the other one that I absolutely recommend you having and I will show you actually how to use this to improve your SEO a little bit later. Final one looks like WP Smush reduces the size of your images so your web pages will load faster. Those are the plugins that I have and those are the ones that I recommend.